Hey guys, StationX here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Legend of Zelda Game & Watch. I've been waiting for this for a while now. When they, when they first did these with the Mario one, like, I was so happy when these got announced. These were like really nice surprises as a Nintendo fan because I honestly didn't think they would do a thing like this. Uh, in case you don't know what a Game & Watch is, uh, Game & Watches were... Nintendo's first ever handheld out. Uh, the, at least in the United States, is the first like Nintendo handheld thing they released over here. Um, to give you an example of what an old one looks like, I don't have like the original, uh, the original ones because they made multiple different series of uh, Game and Watches ranging from all different types of gimmicks. Uh, they had ones that were uh, made of. <laughs> There was like the Crystal series. Uh, there was these really big arcade looking ones. Uh, there were some really weird looking Game & Watches, but I have one of the multi-screen ones. Like, this is pretty old and banged up because uh, I found this at a used game store. But as you can see here, like this is what an actual Game & Watch, like a legit one from back in the day looks like. And because this is the Donkey Kong one, this actually has a D-pad on it because uh, the D-pad was something that was created because of the Game & Watch and because of Donkey Kong. Not this specific one, but uh, the first instance of a directional pad or D-pad uh, was used on a Game & Watch. And so uh, with this one, this one you also like with these ones, you used to have to have watch batteries in here. These wouldn't uh, turn off. There was no off button because these were intended to be like watches. So you couldn't turn these off. <laughs> and then at least with this one, you could close it. So you don't have to like the old ones. It was just one. It was just like you minus this part off and it was just like this bottom half. So it looked weird when you had it on constantly, but it was just it was meant for a watch. It was a watch, it's hence the game to watch like the watch portion so you had to set the time and it would just have the time on it but i don't know i just don't like it being on 24 7 but i mean this was a really nice little uh thing that you could use to distract yourself almost like, just kind of pass the time this was that's what this was intended for because the person who created this who i'm i can't pronounce their name properly so i'm sorry if i uh butcher it but gunpei yakoi was the one who made it made this and he got the idea was someone just kind of like playing around with their calculator on a bus it was that <laughs> it was that kind of boredom that inspired this kind of thing to exist because it the graphics kind of resemble a calculator in a sense after a while they they stopped making them because they came out with the game boy which you know that one you could put multiple cartridges in it was just the one device you just had to buy different games if you wanted a different game on the Game & Watch, you had to buy a new Game & Watch. So there was just one packing game with it. Uh, and it, so eventually they got they stopped doing them. But what ended up happening was uh, when they had this service called uh, Club Nintendo, they did a, rec uh, a recreation of the original Game & Watch system. And the first one they made was Ball. And so that was the first time they ever like brought it back in a sense. Other than doing multiple different collections of Game & Watch games on Game Boy, Game Boy Color, I think Game Boy Advance, and then even the DS had a few. But with the Game & Watch, it was very important to Nintendo's history. It was kind of like their first success, not only in Japan uh, as far as video games are concerned, but like in uh, definitely in the United States, because I believe the Game & Watch came out before the NES. I'm not too sure. But several years later, Mario's 35th anniversary comes around and we get we get a little surprise of them redoing a Game & Watch system. They redid Ball, but they also wanted to do Super Mario Bros. 1 and 2 on here. And so, of course, it's not going to look like the exact recreation of the original Game & Watch unit because Ball only needed, I think, two buttons, which is, and these were both on each side. And so it didn't have a D-pad, but of course, if you're going to put some Mario Brothers, you need that like NES style layout. So 
they that's what they did but i mean the packaging here is gorgeous they have this nice little slip-on cover which all these little details and stuff in the game is just sublime i love it and of course underneath this little part you have the actual game and watch game itself which instead of it just being the game and watch character uh they have mario on it and a nice little detail about these little units because this one's actually out of the box i've opened it before is that these ones uh have all sorts of different like little easter eggs from super mario brothers that you can do on here and i mean the screen is beautiful it's very pretty to look at and when you hit the game button it drops down this menu of super mario brothers one two and ball and so you have this really nice little uh collection of games here it's not the most like oh my god amazing innovative thing of all time but it's just a nice little novelty for collector's items like how the nes classic and super nintendo classic was just a nice little thing for collectors to have if you were a big fan of nintendo's history you would appreciate this and of course it's got this nice little speaker right here uh, it's a batteries it's a rechargeable battery with usb type c which is also very nice to see and you could turn it off and of course it has like all the original buttons and stuff from like like the time button uh i'm not actually sure if they had a pause and reset I'm, i believe they do but uh and then of course this is a new button they added just to have the menu on and so you, there's all sorts of little different little things you could discover with the uh game and watch super mario brothers uh, i don't know all of them i only know a few but it, i don't want i'm not gonna go into that whole thing because really i just want to be here to uh unbox the game and watches but yeah this is what it is this is what it is and it's essentially the same with the zelda one although there are some differences i had a little bit of a spoiler just because of the fact that uh my brother got one as well and i watched him open it but this is essentially what a game and watch system look, looked like back in the day minus this little d-pad because most of the games actually just had the buttons but i think it was just a nice faithful recreation of it and it, it just in a modern sense and it was really nice. I thought it was cool looking. But now we're gonna actually take a look at the Zelda one. So we're gonna just slide this open. I took the, the, the uh, little tape off already, so we're gonna be fumbling around. Hopefully not too much when I open this. There you go, and you get this nice little user's guide on top. And then, of course, this is beautiful. Now in the uh, Mario one, you didn't have this nice little thing in it. It was just this white sleeve that <laughs> you just pull up, uh, pull open the tab and then you just pull the thing out. And we got this beautiful little system in here and this nice little detective sleeve on it. And of course this doubles as a stand that you could do. So that's really nice. Open this little tab up and you got the charger there. So here we have the charger out. And so this is not the most, like the most impressive charging cable on the face of the planet. It's very short, but I mean, it gets the job done anyway. And so, I mean, if you really wanted a longer charger cable, you could just use a uh, Nintendo Switch Pro controller charger cable if you have this Nintendo Switch Pro controller, or you could just, you know, order the cable, that kind of cable separately if you wanted to. But uh, going into the system itself. Oh, wait, before we do that, there's the little sleeve for Zelda as well. Pretty much the same deal as the Mario one. I just always like those little details they add to it. And then, of course, the box itself. This one actually comes with four different games. And it comes with this little gauntlet mode. It's like a playtime timer. Which, essentially, there's like three minutes of just bashing enemies. That was the part that got spoiled for me, just because... Uh, when my brother opened it, we looked through everything. <laughs> uh, but same deal here. You got the uh, you got the power button, USB charger. You got your speaker here, the D pad, the two A and B. And but we have a start and select this time, so it really rep represents a uh, Game and Watch, not Game and Watch, <laughs> an NES controller. Uh, which th these are necessary because if you played the Legend of Zelda, at least the f like at, le at the very least the first one, uh, you're gonna need those buttons. But you also, again, got the pause set, time set up, and the game menu as well. So now we're going to turn this on right here. And, of course, here you go. You got this little time thing. You got the time. Uh, I, it's not set properly. I didn't set it up or anything. 
Uh, but yeah, you could set the time by hitting the time button and it'll just give you that option to do it. Uh, you get the pause set thing. You also get the little option right there. Uh, either an auto sleep feature, which is something that they didn't have with the original, which is actually kind of nice. So if you want to have that on while you're like not playing it, just turn it off. Just like how other systems have an auto sleep thing. This is a nice little thing they added, which I think is cool. And then of course you got the brightness and volume. Uh, I'm gonna turn it down just because, uh, we all heard the Legend of Zelda themes and stuff, so we all know what it is. I just don't want to deal with, like, getting, uh, in trouble with the music, though. So we're just gonna do that. And then you have the game, uh, menu drop down. And you have the first Legend of Zelda, the Link, uh, Adventures of Link, which is the second one, and a Link, uh, Link's Awakening. I almost forgot the name for a second. Uh, Link's Awakening, hold on, let me actually fix the brightness, too, because it looks a little bright. I think that's better. Uh, there you go. So, as you notice, also, there's, uh, there's, uh, language options. So, you have, you have English and Japanese, sorry for stuttering, for both the first two games, which is nice. I really like it specifically for the first one because that, uh, when Legend of Zelda first came out in Japan, it was a Famicom disc system game, not a normal cartridge. And with those games, they had better, uh, sound quality, you know, I, I, some of the sounds I actually, or like music tones, I actually like the, uh, cartridge versions better than the, uh, the Famicom disc system ones. Uh, the two most notable that I know of is, uh, Legend of Zelda and Metroid. The themes are slightly different, so if you wanted to look th at the differences, uh, you can go online on YouTube, and there's videos of it with that. But I can confirm from using my brother's uh, Game & Watch, Zelda one, that the two different versions are faithful to their original counterparts on both the NES and the Famicom. So the Japanese one has the Japanese music on it, and the English one has the English music on it, which is really nice. And then, of course, uh, when we get into the Zelda menu, when you first pop it in, pretty sure it fixed the typo uh, typos they had. I know the original one had some typos on the NES, and I don't remember exactly which what parts was messed up. It's been so long since I popped it in, but it looked fine when I read it. So, like, I didn't, I didn't like have a have a. Uh, brain malfunction when reading it or maybe I'm just stupid and was able to understand it <laughs> but you know it looked like they fixed it so I mean it was you know it's something that they should probably fix if they didn't but uh, of course you got the links too which some people love and hate it it's not a not their most popular Zelda game but hey it's the first two on there which is nice and then we get Link, uh, Link's Awakening which I would have liked if they did the DX version which is like the fully colored one uh, instead of just straight up going with uh, the original game, uh, game Boy version, or at least give us the option to do either or. I don't know if there's a hidden way to turn the DX version on. I don't know if that's a secret that might be in there. I don't want to say it is in case it isn't, but maybe that would that would be really cool if it is. But I mean, right off the bat, you only get like the uh, Game Boy one, which is like the mute green kind of deal going on. Which is like, okay, you know, it's not the, yeah, you, compared to like the remaster on the Switch, it's like, if you wanted to see what the original one looks like, now you can. And this one's interesting because it's not just English and Japanese. You also get a French option and a Dutch option, which is funny because that means the Link's Awakening one gets four language options, more, you know, compared to the other two, which is only English and Japanese, which, I don't know, I just think it's a little funny. <laughs> that they just added two more languages like that. Uh, but hey, I mean, that's more than merrier. It's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if there's any differences between those other ones. I think once they got to this one, they're, they're practically all the same. And then you have, of course, the game Vermin on here. So they put Vermin on this uh, instead of having Ball. Uh, and then, of course, you have the Gauntlet mode. I'll, I'll show a little bit of what Vermin is. Uh, game & Watch games back in the day used to have uh, two different types of modes. And this is essentially how it would be like. Uh, Vermin, you don't really need to press any buttons. You just really use the D-pad on this one. Essentially, Game & Watch games are somewhat like arcade-style things where you just want to get the highest score. They're very simple and not 
complicated at all to understand, which is kind of Nintendo's MO when it came to Game & Watches. They didn't want them to be too complicated. Uh, they're almost kind of like how Pac-Man was very simple to learn, but hard to master sort of thing. It's a similar concept here. And I think that's why the Game & Watches did so well back in the day, because of the fact that these are so easy to just pick up and play. Uh, of course, I, f I messed it up already. I was about to say, he's not doing anything. Okay. Yeah, so I'm already doing horrible, so we're going to stop here. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it as far as the Game & Watches. They don't have, like, a super ton of features on it as far as, like, an actual handheld system. But still, this is just something that is really nice for collectors to have. And this was, again, done for Zelda's 35th anniversary, just like Mario's 35th anniversary. I know Metroid also had its 35th anniversary, either this year or next year. But I doubt they're going to do another one for Metroid, because Metroid's not as... Not... At least not before it wasn't as considered it wasn't considered as popular compared to mario and zelda at least in nintendo's eyes i think a lot of people would like to see that one or maybe donkey kong as well if donkey kong has an anniversary coming up Ooh. coming up Ooh. is donkey kong had an anniversary coming up that would be nice to have a game and watch like that as well but you know i think that both this one and the mario one are both really nice little pieces of Nintendo history to be added to the long line of Nintendo systems just to celebrate both its pa uh, both past and far as Game & Watch and their two most popular series of all time. But that'll pretty much be it today. I've been Station X, and I hope you have a wonderful day.